hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime making 2 and today i'm going to be giving you part 3 of what if naruto travel the hoshirama's time remember to get this one to 300 like as usual share this to all of your friends and your social media platform and next over in anime king i'm going to be posting a new episode of what if naruto was the greatest puppeteer so stay tuned for that and i hope you guys enjoy and i'm also going to be posting a new episode of what if naruto's a godly mage next so stay tuned for that as well guys and remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both anime king and anime king 2 go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the anime king family and thank you for all of your help and your support and yeah without further ado what is the beginning of this new episode start the intro So the last time we left off, the head of the Senju and the head of the Uchiha were thinking the same things about their sons as they want to find out how are they improving so greatly at such a fast rate. Hoshirama went on a mission where he was pinned down and his brother was unconscious. But luckily, Madara came there. As Madara finished off Ninja with a well-placed kunai, as he used his sharing gun to copy the stroll, so the both of them were able to get it. But the both of their fathers are still a bit hesitant to believe that they were getting so strong on their own but the war then started as the battle started a raging war where Madara saw Hoshirama on the field as his father told him to go and kill Hoshirama and Hoshirama father told him to go and kill Madara as their little brothers were there as well but Hoshirama had an idea a jutsu that Naruto taught him the clone jutsu along with the transformation jutsu and let's just say that the Senjus won that battle the next time though the war got even hotter as this time it wasn't going to stop that easily as deaths were everywhere but Naruto arrived on the battlefield as Naruto had sent something while in sage mode he was the strongest person here but he wouldn't let that go to his head as he smashed a Rasengan that devastated the land he told all of them to leave no man's land was a place that no one owned but Naruto told him that he owned it all of them had to flee as they wanted to know more about this new upcoming person as he was wearing a hood as all of them left, as Hoshiram and the others were grateful that they didn't have to war each other. But Naruto and the others knew that a time would come when they would have to separate. As the two little brothers knew as well because they were on the plan now. But Hoshirama and Tobirama came up with the idea. As they talked to Mito, as they told Mito about a wandering Uzumaki. And she was grateful to know about that. As there had been a lot of wandering Uzumaki who went out and didn't report back till years. To learn to study the Fuinjutsu arts and other things about the world. When Hoshirama told her that this Uzumaki had blonde hair, she was even more shocked as she wanted to meet him quickly. Yes, yeah, she was excited. As they relayed this information to Naruto, as Naruto was happy for that because he knew that the boys would have to split up. So Madara and Aizuna came there as they would start their training with their father, more intense training, until they meet on the battlefield yet again. As Naruto shook hands with him as they headed off. As Hoshirama and Tobirama then came, as they were bringing Naruto back to the compound. So Naruto was going to meet the head of the Uzumaki. And also, he was going to meet the head of the Senju as well. The head of the Uzumaki hasn't picked a person to succeed him yet. As a man, start his life a bit old. Even more his standards. So that is why he only had the one daughter. And he was still looking for someone to succeed him in that area. To rule the Uzumaki clan. Even though they were joining the Senju clan and the Uzumaki clan completely. By the union between Hoshirama and Mito. So yeah guys, it was basically what I thought you guys gained. Switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So what is the beginning of this new episode? The group did not hop from trees to trees. They were walking on the ground at random civilians. And this made the time period just longer. And it made Naruto more anxious of meeting the Uzumakis and the Senjus. And Naruto knew nothing about the Uzumaki clan. Hoshirama and Tobirama did not say anything about it. All they said was that the Uzumakis were different. And when he get there he would understand. What the hell does that mean? He didn't know what the two had said to their father. Tell him to come there, or the Uzumaki clan head, but he really hoped that he didn't screw up. Well, he was glad that no one was trying to kill him on sight. That was more than a relief. 
But he did realize by joining the clan there was no going back. He was in this until the end. He would become a part of history. It had only really hit him full frontal. When Tobirama told him that he would be joining the Uzumaki clan. Yes, that is when it hit him that he won't be going back. He wasn't going to see his friends ever again. Essentially, he wouldn't live long enough. And even if he did, he would probably be senile or something. And he wouldn't even recognize them. And they would not know him. It was a rather depressing thought. But he accepted that thought because honestly, what could he do to change it? So he couldn't change where he was. But it wasn't like he minded. The Senjus has become families to him. As well as the Uchiyas. As they formed bonds that were tight. Or maybe even tighter than the one that he and Sasuke had. They were going to build Konoha together. Bringing the Uzumaki, Senjus and Uchiha. They were going to start the world with pure peace. It was all Naruto could ask for. It was all he could strive for. But he realized by joining the clan he would also have to join the wars. He could only hope that he didn't have to kill anyone. Not them out sure but kill. He really hoped that he wouldn't have to resort to such extremes. Time skip. Naruto was shocked. The Uzumaki head was a tall skinny old man with a long beard. His hair has nearly turned completely grey. And his expression was a peaceful sleepiness. And Naruto liked his attitude. Well even though he was expecting someone more boisterous. But this man was very calm and nice. You have the Uzumaki chakra alright Mito whistle. More than most in fact. It seems like Kami love you she said. Hush Mito chan not just yet. The clan head placed a hand on Mito's head. As Mito leaned on her father. As Naruto was just there really nervous. As Hoshirama and Tobirama were laughing from the sidelines. They didn't want to attract their father's attention so they had to keep the laughter in and that was killing them. As Batsuma didn't really seem like he just Naruto at all. The way he was just looking at him and Naruto didn't really like him as well. This attitude of his. So you're a part of the wandering fraction. The clan head asked as three thought entered Naruto's mind and he paused to consider it for a brief moment. There were so many wandering Uzumaki it would explain why every now and then Uzumaki's will pop up out of nowhere in Naruto's time. But he did not dwell on it. This was an important conversation. Yes, well my parents more than me. But they were attacked by an enemy clan. While I was away, looking for some ingredients and others, my mother liked to cook you see. And she had a rather specific taste. And when I got back, Naruto his voice trail off in a regretful tone. That is most unfortunate. I regret your position kid. The clan head voice was much deeper than the way he looked it to be. And Naruto was sure if he wanted to, it would really boom. It's okay, said Naruto. Well, mostly. As he allowed pain to overcome his voice before clearing it away. They always spoke of the clan. Never said too much about it, just passing remarks. I'm afraid I don't even know much about my heritage. My mother said that she would teach me later when I was older, but... As his voice choked off at that point. While he was talking, he had to carefully suggest his words. Because while they were lies, his thoughts... Or not. For instance, Jerry was the one to tell Naruto that he would teach him sealing. But he died before he could teach him that. If he outright lied, the Uzumakis would pick it up after all. Most of them had incredible sensory ability. So you don't know sealing, Mito said. Naruto shook his head no. And then he felt her chakra start to whip around in excitement at that. She was very good at containing herself however. Well then kid, I guess we should get you started. A Uzumaki that doesn't know sealing isn't much of a Uzumaki at all. As a hand clapped down on his shoulder, as the clan head had his hands on Naruto's shoulder, and Naruto could feel the man chakra whipping around in excitement. Tell me first though, how do you have blonde hair? His expression was like an excited child. What is the big deal about that? Bachan was blonde and she was Mito's granddaughter. My father, he wasn't a Uzumaki. Was he a shinobi? asked Mito. Yes, said Naruto. He taught me one of his best moves. No, he thought to himself. Jerry I did. My mom was also. A very good shinobi, but I didn't learn very much other than her taijutsu style. He was told that the two of them were similar. They always said that we have time, said Naruto. Ah, such is the unfortunate. Things of all different things. Time is your own, until it is your not. The clan head murmur, and for some strange reason, it makes sense Naruto. As he remember what he said to Oshirama, what if they don't believe me? Naruto asks. Then you run like hell, and when I become clan head, I'll make you become a senju. Mito can teach you sealing, Hoshirama said. As Naruto shook his thoughts of that, because everything was going well so far. As all the tenseness and nervousness were being sapped away 
but the surprisingly comforting clan head. Mito leaned towards Naruto as she sniffed him closely. Before returning back to her father, he's got a lot of chakra, and his potential is probably the greatest in the clan. She stated in confusion. Unless I'm wrong, she said. Do you have any sensory abilities, Uzumaki Naruto? Yes, somewhat, said Naruto. Hoshirama said that it was a Uzumaki thing, but I'm afraid I don't know exactly much about it. But I'm willing to learn though, he said. Believe it! As Hoshirama smiled at that. As Naruto, eyes were shining with determination. The clan head started to laugh. As he looked towards Naruto, Welcome home, brother, he said. The reason being, no one could fake the chakra, that personality, and especially that catchphrase. Believe it. It is just too much of a reflex in all Uzumakis. As Naruto received a bone crushing hug from Mito. Tonight, brothers and sisters, we celebrate the return of one of our own in the presence of our Senju cousins, Afis Toburama said. The two brothers had moved closer to Naruto as the clan head made his decoration. As Hoshirama turned to him, I love you, man. I officially love you, he said. As Naruto was confused by his expression, you will understand once you try their cooking. They have some God given talent for food. Is you can't even describe how amazing it is. As Hoshirama's eyes glazed over, as he was thinking about the food that was going to come, as Naruto wondered if any of them knew about ramen yet. Come, brother, a male Uzumaki happily grabbed Naruto. You must learn sealing something, anything, before the night ends and before happy sun greet us tomorrow no Toburama yelled he coughed and noticed the audience on him I think it would be better if you introduce Naruto-kun to some of the more finer delicacy that life has to offer the Uzumaki paused as he nodded to himself yosh I shall go start cooking immediately he said Naruto was confused until Hoshirama leaned over he's the best cook we can't let him leave and to think he almost didn't cook tonight Toburama said as he shivered Sooner or later, Naruto was going to have to learn all of their names, but that guy reminded him of Guy Sensei and Lee. As he loved their antics, as he wondered, why was Nagato this fun? Time skip, Naruto got to try the Uzumakis cooking. They were blessed by God indeed. This was almost better than Ichirak Ramen, believe it. Well, almost. His mouth had felt like he was in the heavenly wonders of all the things gracious in this world. As he resigned to learn himself how to cook as well. When the food was this good, there was no way wasting a chance like this not to learn. Besides, he didn't know how to make ramen, so this was only added to his knowledge. You just couldn't argue with good food. And him wanted to learn everything about the Uzumaki. Made the Uzumakis even more welcoming of him, if that was even possible. As Naruto found out that the Uzumakis have some amazing recipes for a kind of sushi dish. As some other things that he thought that Madara might like. Aizuna did everything that Madara did, so he figured their taste in food was similar. So he wrote them down and sent a shell clone to the Uchiha compound to give it to Madara. Since most of the shinobis around didn't know something as basic as the transformation, and the Uchiha's were too arrogant to use their Sharingan inside the compound, Naruto went there undetected. Madara decided to learn how to cook as well, surprising those in his family. As Naruto snickered when he thought what the history books were going to say about them, insanely powerful. The greatest ninjas to war the elemental nation since the Sage of Six Path, and they also make a hell of a housewife, as he chuckled to himself. Time skip. To the Uzumaki's Naruto was like a toy, a shiny toy, a blonde toy. Everyone wanted to teach him, every single person wanted to teach him something. He never experienced this kind of feeling before. From failing at the academy into bribing Jerry to teaching him. He had never been given help without asking so freely before. On his way there, someone came up to him. I'm going to teach you how to run. Run? Yes, and before you scoff, just know, you don't know how to run. Until you have to run from a bunch of angry Akamichi, who you just ruined their dinner. Simply running is not enough. Ask any Uzumaki, they will tell you what happened. As Naruto would only laugh at that, he could only imagine what a group of angry Akamichi was like after witnessing Choji. But that wasn't all they wanted to teach him. They seemed really sore about him not knowing and stealing. As Mito came up to him, they're trying to distract you. Is it working? Distract me? From what? Your pain, she said. You hide it behind large smiles. She placed a hand on his chest, but we can sense it in here. You're in pain. Naruto froze for a moment. As he relaxed and gave her a bright smile. I'll be alright. You shouldn't worry about me. Losing family is painful. Your pain is our pain. It is a way of the Uzumaki. 
you will come to understand soon enough, Mito said. Sensors, they were all sensors in a personal chakra, representing their inner thought to some extent, as they could pick up on this from Naruto. Well, he was going to have a hard time keeping secrets, or maybe they would allow him to keep his past to himself. Arriving there, colors. That was the first word that popped into his mind when he entered the Uzumaki compound. Everything was plastered to the brightest colors everywhere. If they were going for stealth, they would fail miserably, like him wearing orange. He noticed though there was no red colors, that color was left to their iconic ear. Now that he was inside, those that offered to teach him doubled their efforts. As Nerd decided to count how many people wanted to teach him, so he formed the amount of clones. Everyone went silent. They pop pretty easily, said Naruto. But I get all of their memories when they return back to me. So I could teach any one of these, and they will go back to you, said Mito. Yes, Naruto said. If you want, you could try it. Just go with one of them, where I can't see you and then dispel it. No, I trust you, she said. And it's your loss if it doesn't work because we may live long, but we're impatient as ever. We'll only teach you one, said Mito with a grin. A poof of smoke as Naruto got the image from a clone. It seems like they were now enjoying themselves with these clones. Time skip. So tell me, kid. The quiet, deep voice addressed him. As most of them refer to him as kid, he supposed that to them his 16 years of age meant really nothing. How does the learning go the kind of acts? Naruto chuckles your back of his head. It's been a week since he came here, and he tried to get used to his new life. It's going well, considering that the new, favorite pastime is to pop the clones by using creative and new elaborated pranks. I'm waiting for the day one of those pranks actually catch a real me. He said that smile to show that he meant no real harm in the words. The clan head chuckle is a rather interesting technique, and you use it well. It suits the Uzumaki greatly. The information must be quite exhausted to go through though. Naruto shook his head no, as he felt that the man was concerned. And that made him felt, well, rather warm. Everyone here was just so nice. When it comes to your family, they always are worried about your well-being and your safety. I'm used to it, and besides, I just meditate at the end of the day. Meditate? That absurd practice of sitting still, the man asks. Naruto laughed as he first felt that way about meditation as well. Until he didn't say training. It's helpful, Naruto said, as he wouldn't get into a debate about Senjutsu. If you say so, kid. However, it will be quite the party trick. Sitting still, that is. And Naruto supposed that it would. Mito especially would probably love it. He wondered if any of them could actually sit still like he could. He noticed that very quickly. They fidget more than he did. They all remind him of when he was younger. He hadn't re realized how much he matured till he came here. But this place was wonderful. A group of girls sitting in the courtyard, their mothers a distance away, giggling and talking. Men walking the road, singing out loud, because they could. Occasionally, a Uzumaki woman would come in and singing into the harmony. Or, a woman would come out and say that it would be too loud and whack them beside the head, but then she smiled and then they all laughed. They were friendly brawls in the street, laughing while brawls went on. And these people have no filter. A lie never passed their lips or passed their minds. They said what came to their minds and when they wanted. They were honest to each other and that made them much more closer. A true bond that made them understand everything with each other. As Nerd has never seen that before. Even with the way they greeted each other, they waved, they greeted you loudly. For here, everyone actually truly care about you. He wouldn't say that the Konoha he grew up into was cold and meaningless, but it was nothing compared to this place. But then people only care for themselves. Or a select few, their families. But here, everyone cared about everyone. And it was especially because of their sensor ability that made them so close to each other. Each sensor was different, had a different radius and different strength. And Naruto found out that his was one of the strongest, with the potential to grow even stronger. So there was never a moment alone. Never a moment of privacy. It could not exist in their world. A technique known by one is most likely to be known by most. If one needed help, all those maxes would offer to you. Betraying one member is like betraying them all. Naruto did not really sit down and thought about it all, the complexity of the Uzumakis. He's only been there a week, so he hasn't really learned everything. As Naruto made his way, as he was currently standing at the foot of a mountain, ready to climb it. The plan was him to become the clan head, so he has to catch up on 16 years of things that he needed to know. He had to learn their ways, their culture. They did missions too, and he was sure that he would be sent out on them sooner or later. And he knew that he couldn't leave the compound without them finding out about it, so his training was open to the clan. As he didn't want to think about that though, 
Was he alright to the whole clan knowing his weakness and strengths? Brat. Kurama voice only made him knew that he had more to worry about. Would they treat him differently because he was a Jinjulike? Something that no one in this world have any concept of. You're forgetting that you are part of the wandering fractions you told them. All you need to do is tell them that you're not used to staying in one place. Thank you, said Naruto as he mentally grinned at the fox. Currently, he was learning our art jutsu, which he had a small affinity for. He even had some affinity for water, but he had none for lightning and fire. That was another thing about the Uzumakis, they were in their affinities. They weren't like the Uchiha's or Naras, thinking that everyone must be the same, or they were. What they did share was the ability to do fuinjutsu, kinjutsu, stamina, and their longevity for life. As Naruto planned to master as much as he could, as fast as he could, he didn't have time to waste. He need to prove that he was worthy of being the clan head. He also have to keep in mind that his end goal was Konoha with Madara and Hoshirama. The same Jews and Uchiha's, he had to make sure that everything worked out. He only been here for a week but he was still learning. But from what he see so far, he really liked it. This was his family and he liked it. And he was their brother. He was in a home, away from home. As it made him smile. Time skip. Naruto never spammed the Shadow Clone technique more than he spammed it with the Uzumakis. He created about 3 clones for each of them, as they were willing to teach him all in Fuinjutsu. The lack of knowledge on Fuinjutsu was like an insult to them, and they all wanted to teach him. They were all interested in the Shadow Clone technique, but they never asked Naruto to teach him it, which Naruto found weird. But he never said anything about it. If they want to learn the Shadow Clone technique, all they would have to do is ask. The original Naruto asked one of the art style Uzumaki created a spike for him, like one of the ones he meditated with when he was with the Toads, and that was where he sat as his clones learned the art of Fuinjutsu. The Uzumakis admired the fact that he could stay still for so long, and he was surprised that none of them ever tried meditating before. They were all brilliant intellect, but none of them could sit still for very long. While he meditate, several of them always watch him. It was the most entertaining thing for them, aside from popping his clones. As Naruto has been invited to sit with the head of the clan on many occasions, after 6 months, he became man personal apprentice, something that he was told was a great honor. Hearing that Naruto would only smile, as he smiled for 2 weeks, Mito was the one to teach him the Uzumaki customs. As Naruto tried to act formal when he was invited to dinner with the clan head, but he kinda of messed up, causing all of them to just laugh. As Naruto realized that they were different from other family gatherings, because they were all like time together. It was not like you were with a clan member, it was like you were with family. They gave without expecting anything in return. But they also have a temper. A temper that could rival for the Kayube. He seen it in action when a husband returned home late from a night with the guys. His wife, well, he wondered if his own father Minato had to endure her own temper like that from his mother. But it was the definition of passion. It burned hot and it burned bright. But it also burned out quickly. It was there. And after a suitable punishment, it was gone like it was never there before. And they were also good at Kinjutsu with their blades. And they always use your blades to pop his clones, just to mess with them most of the time and then laugh. As Naruto also showed them how to be stealthy. When asked why anyone wanted to hide their presence from most of them, he replied, to create the ultimate prank. And that was how a new range of stealth seagulls were created. Naruto was with the Uzumakis for exactly 8 months, until they were reminded that war was still going on outside the clans. It wasn't that he forgotten. It was because the Uzumakis did not take much of an active role. Not as much as the Uchiha and Senju had. At the moment, honorable one, there is a breach to the barrier at the east. We estimate three of the higher class. Naruto looked up from the seal that he and the clan head were studying. He sighed. He really hated these petty fights. Well then, they shall be dealt with. Remind them why it's foolish to mess with the Uzumakis. Perhaps brother Naruto can go with two others. We have yet to see him in battle. It's still unknown which fighting style he uses, the clan head said. As you order, honorable one, send Naruto the bow. Moments later, Naruto was at the gates, waiting for his assigned teammates, as he wondered would he have to kill those that intruded, it would not be his first time. But still, he didn't want to. However, Aizuna, Madara, Tobirama, and Hoshirama decided to make a name for themselves. After all, they have to be stronger than everyone else to make their name higher up. He already heard the talks of the Uzumakis about Madara and Hoshirama feats in battle. He heard about their clashes when the Senju and Uchiha's were at it again. And the clashes were becoming well known. And Naruto was here, he hasn't made a name for himself yet. He even heard small talks of Toburama and Aizuna, but they were shadowed by their brothers. 
That wouldn't last long though. They were powerful in their own right. As Nur decided to let them know about the blonde, Uzumaki, he wouldn't kill them, but he would let them spread his name. After all, they need to see his strength firsthand. Let's go, kid. Honorable One said that you're in charge of his mission. A new voice said next to him. Sure, said Naruto. As he was the one in charge, I hope you two can keep up. Then they were out the compound gates and racing across the grassy plains. The three shinobis started making their way towards the Uzumaki compound. As Naruto started to fluctuate his chakra, making the three shinobis know that he was coming. He saw them as they snapped their heads up from the grass. To look who was coming as they felt the chakra. They had no clan markings. Naruto grinned as he flashed past the first one. As he went towards the second one. As he knocked the man straight up in the air with a powerful kick. He leaped off the ground as he slammed his elbow right in the man's stomach as his body crashed into the ground. That one would not be moving just yet. As Naruto wanted to emulate his father with speed, so he increased his speed a lot. Kaiju to rule number one, never let the enemy get behind you. Naruto said behind the first one. As a thought came to his head, that jutsu that Kakashi did on him a long time ago. As he went down, a thousand years of death. The horrified scream from the first man was enough to petrify the third shinobi in his tracks. As Naruto approached the third one, so what was it you guys were after, huh? The man started to shake. The, 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 the ceiling formula barrier that, 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 that's around the compound. Oh, why don't you just make your own? It's really not that hard. Stealing is very not nice, you know? The two Uzumakis with him were snickering, each one watching over an unconscious ninja on the ground. Well, not unconscious, just in unbearable pain. You should leave, said Naruto. Take your friends with you and don't come back. As the two teammates were tossed back at him by the two Uzumakis, the man grabbed his teammates and quickly made his way out of there. Aww. I didn't get to see any of your fighting style, one of them said. If you're that bug bite, all you had to do was ask, said Naruto. But seriously kid, just how good are you, the other one said. Hmm, don't really know, but awesome. It's definitely in there somewhere, Naruto said, going back to the compound. What's awesome? The other one asked. As Naruto forgot that, Dictionary from this time and his time was different. Awesome is an overwhelming feeling of reverence and admiration or fear to your enemy when you cause it. So you know that you're awesome. Man, explain that joke. Just the fun right out of it. He thought to himself. Well, you should know I'm awesome, he said. Hmm, awesome. Sounds good. Uzumakis are awesome. All inspiring. Okay, now you're just overdoing it, said Naruto. Nevertheless, from that day on, everything to the Uzumakis were awesome. Time skip. Naruto Khan. As Naruto was sitting on top of a rock pillar that he learned to create. As he looked down to see Mito running towards him that big grin. Guess what, Blondie? We're going to see Hashikon and Tobikon, she said. We leave in three days, she yelled in excitement. Do you have to call me blonde in order to yell back? Yes, now get down and pack. My father is coming and I still have to. Give you the lesson clan etiquette. As she laughed evilly, Naruto felt like this was going to be painful. Naruto was confused why he had to pack so soon. But he listened to Mito. She was worse than he was when she didn't get what she wanted. And pranks. She was in a whole level than he is. And he still didn't know a lot about this world yet to retaliate on her. And being a Uzumaki meant a lot of rules. Like Senjutsu. If Naruto wasn't doing Senjutsu training, he couldn't stay still for so long. He couldn't keep his mouth shut if he knew he had to say something about something. And sometimes he never took his shoes off. And they were really fussy about that. And sometimes the way to eat something was by shoving it in your mouth as soon as possible. The list was endless and so was the problem that came with it. Naruto focused his shocker the pillar of earth went back in the ground. The moment he landed beside her, she sniffed. Better yet, go take a bath, she said. Well, she had a point. It was a hot day. And he's been working on this jutsu by himself, without any clones. They were busy with learning seals and Uzumaki politics. So he decided to learn this jutsu himself. Coming, Naruto walked near to the river that was near the compound. It was larger than any river he's ever seen before in his life. And it was wild. Making swimming across it was a bad idea. It was great for chakra control though, which Uzumaki needed when it comes to making seals, because you had to make them perfect. In the year that he has been here, Nerd started to perfect his wind style techniques. Before he come to the Uzumakis, he learned some earth style technique, and one or two water style from Hoshirama and Tobirama. From Madara and Aizuna, he confirmed that he had no affinity for fire at all. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't do anything related to fire or lightning, unless he placed it in a seal though. As Madara was pissed about that, he wanted to teach her to something and outdo Hoshirama in some way. It was their rivalry, just like him and Sasuke back then. Still, he has been neglecting his water style and he really shouldn't. 
Guess he should just add more stuff to his training. Ignoring the current, he dives straight into water as he focuses Rocket to stay still. As he sent a pulse to his clones, letting them know that he was going to dispel them all. That was their signal to say goodbye to whoever was teaching them, or to place a bookmark into what they were studying. Then his mind was assaulted by the knowledge, smells, things he never... everything that they did today. He was 17 years behind all that stuff. He had to get it all in. Time skip. Nerdy gave a stiff bow to the Senju guards at the gate as they send a messenger to go and tell Batsuma that they had arrived. Stretched out his senses, Nurta already knew that Oshram was not here. As he stretched out even more, he found him in the forest, working his wood style. Just because he knew how it worked, that didn't make it any easier to accomplish. So far, he was trying to figure out how much of each he needed to make the perfect wood style. The mixture of earth and water. As Nurta wondered what kind of bloodline limit he would have if he worked at creating one of them. He supposed it would be chakra base because he has so much chakra. Well, you wouldn't know unless you tried, right? As they went into compound, Batsuma wanted to talk. So, I see you're fitting in nicely, Nurta-san. It's always good to have strong allies, won't you say? Yes, yes, but I believe I should be strong enough to kick everyone's butt rather than rely on others all the time. It just seemed like a waste to be so dependent. And then everything falls to hell when your allies can't help you out or if they turn on you. I saw that once and it didn't end well, Naruto said, completely abandoning the formal way of speaking. No family, that's different. An alliance is not perfect and fickle as it is easy broken, but family, that is forever. The Senjus and Uzumaki are family and I hope we shall always come to each other's aids if it is needed. He's a odd one, said Batsuma, as he looked towards the Uzumaki clan head, as he measured Nurta up. But he has a good head on his shoulders, knows to not trust completely just because of a signed piece of paper. Nurta did not say anything. The formalities say that he kept his mouth shut. But he could sense Hoshirama Chaka returning back to the compound. Good. No, he didn't have to suffer alone. Pardon my interruption, but may I leave for a moment? I wish to greet Hoshirama on his return. Nurta asks. You may. You weren't exaggerating his sensory abilities. Uzumaki-sama. Perhaps he could teach my sons a few things, Batsuma said. Naruto did not stay to hear the reply, as he hurried out of a stifling meeting, not missing the chuckles from the Uzumaki and Senju guards. That is what you get for being important, brat. One of the Uzumaki said, I'm not important, I'm just some kid who got lost and then Senju bring him home, said Naruto, in confusion. You gotta be joking, right? I knew that you were naive, but they stayed the cake. I guess you can't help it. Well, you still have a lot to catch up on, the Uzumaki said. Naruto was even more confused, but he didn't dwell long on that as he made his way to see Hoshirama. Man, he missed that guy. Too bad they couldn't see the Uchiha as well. As he saw him, he looked tired. Must have been training hard. You're late, Naruto said. Surprised in the Senju. Yeah, yeah, I was getting close to a breakthrough. Besides, I need to work on some steam. Toburamo was sent on a mission. Naruto understood immediately and his sympathies went out to the Senju. Unlike Madara and Hoshirama, Naruto had nothing in this world. His only connection to it was the four ninjas that were destined to become enemies. Not that Naruto had told him that. He will come home. You train him well. I am starting to hear about his exploit, said Naruto. Yeah, he's strong. But someone will always be stronger, Hoshirama said as he gave Naruto a small smile. Well, anyways, I hear you guys are on important business here. We are? I thought it was a regular, keeping up appearance kind of visit, said Naruto. Oh, Naruto, sometime I worry about you. You're here because it was the Maki clan head. As finally ready to introduce his next of kin. And because me and Mito Chan will be married in a few months. What? Really? That's so cool, said Naruto. I wonder who he's gonna pick. As he followed Hoshirama as he walked further into the compound. You know that the clan heads don't take on students unless they're important, right? My father sure as hell doesn't teach. Wait, you mean? Yeah. You're going to be the next clan head of the Uzumaki. Idiot, Hoshirama clarified. No way, said Naruto in shock. What the heck, Naruto? This was what we were working towards. Hoshiram was starting to get seriously worried. No, it's all official. I just never thought it would happen so soon, said Naruto. I mean, I always have big dreams, but this is the first time I've accomplished something I set out to do. I mean, this is just so wow. Hoshiram a chuckle. Congratulations, he said. Thanks. Oh man, this is so cool, said Naruto. Believe it, Konoha will be here before we even know it. Hang on. Why didn't Mito tell me all of this? Hoshiram started to laugh. He really missed his blonde friend. He always have a way of making them feel better no matter what the circumstances were. So, how close are you to completing your wood standard to ask? 
Hmm, at the moment there's too much earth chakra in the mix, with the wood coming out too brittle and not too flexible. If I have more water, it becomes too floppy. Here, I'll show you. Hushrama paused on his way to his room as he clasped his hands together. Its chakra flare as a single, wooden pillar rose from the ground. It cracked and splintered through, as the pillar collapsed to the ground. It was good for firewood, but that was all, Hushrama said. Another pillar then came up, but this time it was dripping and flopping all around. Hardly, have enough strength to keep growing upwards. The wood seemed to be weeping. Hang on, said Naruto. Let me try the sense of chakra that you're using. Maybe I can tell you then. As he placed a hand on Hoshirama's back, as he closed his eyes in concentration, as Hoshirama did it. You're using too much either way, said Naruto. That much is obvious. But you're trying to shove both chakra through your body at the same time. The entire it will be easier to channel, different chakra in different hands. I bet it will be even easier to control that way. <laughs> My bad, Hoshirama said. As Naruto shrugged it off, you would have figured it out on your own anyway. Well, I guess so, he said. As the two walked through the compound, laughing and joking, the Senjus that saw them smile, knowing this was good for the alliance, but never thought that they knew each other that well. So, what's it like with the Uzumaki? asked Hoshirama, as he currently lay at his room. Truthfully, I haven't felt more at home in my entire life, said Naruto. They may be me, very easy. What do you mean by that, Hoshirama said. Well, all my life people told me I'm loud and obnoxious. I never think before I leap. But with the Uzumakis, they're loud as well, and they're just as crazy with their ideas. They leap before even thinking, and they like the things I do. Like bright colors, clashing colors, and ramen. They teach without needing a reason to, sharing knowledge, just to make sure the next generation is powerful. And even more so. They celebrate the ideals of family and friendship, cherishing every bond that they have. They're not afraid to open their mouths and just say what's on their mind. Never before I've met so many people that understand my ways. And I understand them as well, Senruto. Their family. And that feels great. I find myself feeling more and more sorry for their loss in my time. They are a truly amazing clan. That they are. I love their festivals. I think there's one coming up soon. Hoshirama said a small smile. You bet there is. It's a festival of the Kami. All of them, even in Shingami. We're going to celebrate what they have given us in this world. They have the shrine with the mass in them. They look so cool, but they're powerful. They have seals in them that did and do unimaginable things, said Naruto. But like all things powerful in the ninja world, they come at a price. At such a mass are not to be used lightly or at all. Wow, the Uzumakis aren't too concerned with flaunting their power, aren't they? Said Hoshirama. Not really. Like I said, they like family and friendship more than power. Like the Senjus and Uchiyas, you know. That is why your clans are so rivals, the both of you, said Naruto. They're both fighting to protect the ones that they love. Well then, we better hurry up and get stronger so we can stop this ridiculous fighting. I estimate that we're only at Jonin level. Based it on what you say Konoha system rank is. Not bad for a kid, said Naruto. I'm still stronger than you. Naruto said that grin, poking the stage in the ribs. Hey, I can't help it, you're older than me. Just wait, you Uzumaki. Once I get this wood style down in Senjutsu, you're so dead, he said. Oh yeah? Won't mean shit if you can't catch me, said Naruto. As he roughly is here, and run away from the punch, out of the five of them, Naruto's the fastest after all. Tobirama coming a close second. And due to his master of Senjutsu, Naruto was the strongest out of all of them. And due to his clone technique, yes, he was the strongest because he could learn things way faster. As Naruto was still wondering what happened, because even when they were just kids, they had chakra that was already tuning level. As he wondered if peace had made ninja obsolete. He dismissed the thought as he started to dodge Hoshirama's blow. Come on Hoshirama, you're going to have to be faster if you ever want to touch a hair in this awesome head. Naruto says he ducked under a kick. As Hoshirama Taijutsu was amazing, after all that was the most thing he focused on. As Naruto backed away from a kick. As he created a small crater in the ground from Hoshirama, alerting the other Senju to the fight. Miss me again Naruto says he ducked under a punch. As Naruto sends both clan heads exiting the building, as he wondered if he should stop the fight, well, he was having too much fun. Only Hoshirama and Madara would really go all out on him like this. They all loved it, pushing themselves to new heights while having fun at the same time. And this was not a battle to the deck after all, so they had fun. Tobiraman and Aizuna were still a bit hesitant the last time they sparred though. He still didn't understand why, but he shrugged it off. Uzumaki Naruto when I get my hands on you, Hoshirama said. Huh, you're still too slow for that, said Naruto. Hoshirama jumped back and clasped his hands together. As he created three clones that rushed towards Naruto. Really? Increasing number does make you faster, said Naruto. As he ducked and dodged every single blow, not once going on the offensive. You had to be really flexible in fighting Hoshirama. 
two of the clones slam their hands and ground raising earth pillars that Nerd had to jump away from. As Nerd had sensed the third clone, as he struck out with his hand, he spelled the clone without even looking. The smoke from the clone and the zing of the chakra in the air was enough to confuse Nerd for just a second. Essential abilities as wood burst from the ground and wrapped around his ankle and his arm wrist. As Hoshirama chuckled, I don't have to be faster, just smarter. As he flicked Nerd in the forehead, Ow, said Naruto. Ah, uh, naruto -kan, I think it's safe to say that you just got owned, said Mito, as she and her father was watching. Oh really, Naruto said, as he poofed away. As the real Naruto came out of the ground, I was wondering how long it would take you to get out of there, Hoshirama said. Now fight me seriously, no clones. Alright, but define serious, Naruto said. No ninjutsu, no genjutsu, no senjutsu or fonjutsu, straight up taijutsu and kinjutsu. As Hoshirama pulled his blade, as Hoshirama shot forward, as Naruto flipped, Mito, can I borrow your sword? As she shook her head no with a smile on her face, as she laughed when he grumbled a bit, as Naruto pulled out a kuna as he started to block, Hoshirama strikes. More and more senjus were popping out from the compound, draw towards the fighting, as they were watching two clan ears, whispering to themselves, Naruto, this is fun and all, but too much of this and it will reveal our secret of what we're actually hiding. Is that such a bad thing, Naruto says he blocked the blade? For now, yes. At the moment, I have created the perfect balance between training, missions, and family. I don't want to disrupt this balance by making my father see I can handle more than he sent me on. Also, the Uzumakis are not blind into the warring state, and they too offer their service to who would have them. You've just been kept away from front time being, so you can catch up on your learning. After this little get together, I imagine I will see you on the battlefield a lot more. Well then, let's tell them what a still meet. Then neither of us will win this. As the both of them flip back, at this rate, Nerd said, making his voice a bit louder, neither of us would have won. As he looked at his kunai, what were you trying to do? Cleave the thing he asked. Naruto, your kinjutsu suck, Mito said. As Naruto sighed, there was just no pleasing that girl. But his performance made me think that he's ready for something else the clan head said. As he watched Naruto, I was fighting with the kunai, what do you want from me, said Naruto. Mito crossed her arms the huff. Hey, that reminds me, there's someone I want you to meet. As Hoshirama looked at him. Before they headed off, Hoshirama, this is Takashi Uzumaki, as he gestured to one of the Uzumaki guards. He and I often go on missions together. As Hoshirama understand, Naruto was telling him that he made a friend. Even though family was something different, friend was also something different, as Naruto always cherished his friends as well. Takashi was Naruto first, Uzumaki friend, as Takashi was also surprised at the introduction. As the both of them greeted each other, Hoshirama and Takashi, as Naruto and Hoshirama walked away, Takashi looked over at the other Uzumaki. You felt that too, right? Yes. There is much of young Naruto that we do not know. Much of it we will never learn, we can only guess. They felt a strange feeling a minute ago when Naruto introduced Takashi. What do you mean? I thought you guys were all about openness and community. One of the Senjus asks, is tone polite. Well, we speculate that Naruto lost his parents long before he came to us. That he was far too young to be taught anything about the Uzumakis and left to fend to himself for many years before meeting us. He hides it well, but there are signs, slips, that he has a painful past, a powerful past and dangerous. Young Naruto hides much of his power, and we wait for a day he will show it to us freely. Hoshirama san is much the same way. He hides more than what yellow is can to see, but his reasons, they are acceptable. He doesn't wish to be sent away from the clan or his family for a longer period of time. And higher rank missions will take that away from him. But Nurtikon, he is different. He was unfamiliar with the prospect of receiving without giving anything in return. At first he was startled and tense at every gesture, every casual greeting, eyes showing doubt and glee. Takashi paused as he frowned. It was like he didn't know much kindness in his life. Had his parents been alive for most of his life, he would not be so surprised by the Uzumaki way of living. And you trust him as your clan head, the Senju asked in surprise. Look at him, said Takashi. Everything about him is honest. He cannot lie, not if he try. Watch him with Hoshirama-san. They were friends long before they came here. It's even in his talker, there's a strong bond between the two. While Nurtokan may have a past that is beyond our understanding, he has one thing that every Uzumaki valued the most. He has the heart of a Uzumaki and will always, without fail, place those around him before himself. His past is his own and we will not press the issue. It is for him to realize that we will never abandon him, as his eyes often show fear a lot about abandonment. I don't think he even knew that he showed it so easy, Takashi said. 
The Senju blinked in amazement. While they might have a strong bond with the Uzumakis, they will never fully understand the clan. While the Senjus would not stand for secrets, thinking that they might harm the clan, the Uzumakis let them stay as they were. With a clan such as theirs, with their sensual ability, they know what a secret can be. Yes, they know. So they will not bother it no matter what. For want of a small piece of individuality by himself. Time skip. As Aizuna watch a body in front of him. As he tense. As Madara was beside him. There's nothing we can do, said Madara. Let's get this over with. Aizuna pulled out a kunai. Yes, he said. The four Senjus hired to protect the precious item that the Uchiha's were hired to steal. They were not Koshirama and Tobirama, but they were Senjus. And the Uchiha's that were told to go with Madara and Aizuna would not let them live. The most Madara and Aizuna could do was allow them a swift and painful death, and their body can be left behind to be buried. As Madara felt the weight on his shoulder increase, meanwhile, as Naruto is currently walking in the clan ahead, your fighting style, naruto -kun, while unique and effective, is far from the Uzumaki fighting style. Up till now you have been learning ninjutsu, and you are very good as most of our Uzumakis, and you have been learning sealing, something any true Uzumaki knows. You also have been learning the history and custom of your clan, but I believe that now you are ready to learn something a bit different, something that you have to dispel all of your clones to achieve. Naruto nodded, as he sent the warning to his clones, as he then dispelled them as he absorbed all the memories. As Naruto was led to the other side of the compound, near the cliffs, he never really came here before, it was mostly isolated, just the cliffy areas. As he watched the clan head went through seals, Fujutsu also rely on hand signs most of the time, as the man unlocked something from what Naruto could see. The clan head then pressed a palm to a blank rock. A large seal and array spread out all over the rock, as a door was created out of nothing, it just appeared. The door then pushed inside and opened up. There was a room, vast. It was completely empty. This will be the last stage of your training, Nurtakan. After this, there's nothing else to teach you about being a Uzumaki. If you master this, then you have done. In the space of a few months, what other Uzumakis do for their entire lifetime? But there's still so much I have to learn, said Naruto. Ah, the mastering of more jutsu from an element that you've already grasped to understand and create your own techniques. For that, it will take at least an hour or something else to master other jutsu. Or a new type of storage seal. Nurutokan, you know the basic of sealing, so much so that you can create them yourself. Anything you learn after this, it will all be adding to a perfect Uzumaki way. You must remember one will never stop learning, one will never stop improving. That is a way of life. But there will come a way when one will have to start teaching. You've mastered three elements wind, water, and earth. You got Yen Chakra in spades. Still not sure what you're gonna do with that, but you got it. You're brilliant at sealing picking up faster than anyone's ever had. It's like it's just clicked for you or something. As Naruto turned to see that Takashi was approaching them, smiling. Thank you for coming to the clan, he said, as a man bow in respect, as he requested honorable one. As Takashi turned towards Naruto, you got more heart than all of the Uzumakis combined. We're still not sure how that is possible, but you got it, without a doubt. But you still need to work more near Kinjutsu, Takashi said. Thank you, Naruto said, as he felt a bit, well, embarrassed at all the praise. So, what's next? When you go into that room, you'll have to make it to the other side to deactivate the seals that power the room. The room itself is an obstacle course designed to hone one reflexes, speed, strength and stamina, increase one's overall physical, and test one's sealing. But mostly, it's about testing one's body to perform the Uzumaki, Taijutsu perfectly on an instinctual level. It will scan your chakra as soon as you pass the doorway and start at a difficult level that the seals scan you to be at. The entire seal is going to scan your performance and fix your mistake and work on correcting all of them. It doesn't have a pattern, it's completely unpredictable, so don't waste your time trying, the clan head explained. As Naruto listened, keenly, you will be locked in until you disable the ceiling, and that is where I come in. See, it's dangerous going in there, because not everyone comes out. You could very well run out of chakra even as a Uzumaki. I'll be on the outside sending food, so don't worry about starving. As Naruto wasn't concerned about that, he was concerned about the bathroom. Because it does look like anything is in there. Are there any periods when I'll be able to rest near the axe? Briefly, it isn't designed to kill a person. It's just, sometimes it cannot be completed. The one who attempted it simply overstepped their limits and could not overcome them. Takashi said the frown. There's an override seal on this side. And seals are set so I will know if I'll have to pull you out. Naruto nodded, I understand, as he turned towards the door. 
What's the record on this course? Naruto, I don't want you to push yourself to break a record. That wouldn't help you, the kind head said. I'll be fine, said Naruto. I'm just trying to get an idea of what I'm up against. Two months. That is the fastest it's ever been completed. But the course is designed to target your mistakes and weaknesses. So you have to be careful, Nerd Gun, said Takashi. Always, Nerd says he gave him a thumbs up. They relaxed. Nerd giving a thumbs up was the best reinsurance he could give. Say bye to Mito-chan for me, he said, as he rushed inside. Why didn't you tell him that it was your record? The clan head said turn to Takashi, because it wasn't needed. He would be focused on beating me, and he needs to focus on something else, working on correcting his mistakes, and that will defeat the whole purpose of the exercise. Still, I wonder how he will do. Time skip, six weeks later, as Naruto came out of the room as he collapsed unconscious from exhaustion, but other than that he was fine. As Takashi had picked him up and carried him to the clan head. As Takashi was proud, he didn't even mind that he was supposed to be the next clan head if Naruto didn't come along. But he realized Naruto was much better to be the leader. After that he was announced to be the next heir of the Uzumaki and he was taken to complete the final step of his initiation, something he didn't even know about. As Takashi led him to another isolated part of the Uzumaki compound. As Naruto never knew that he had a black mitt. This Nurtokan is where you will receive your very own set of armor. Uzumaki armor is special, it is made of a special type of steel and seals built right into the core of it. It's lighter than other armor and it's more flexible without losing durability, Takashi explained. As the blacksmith looked up when they entered, Ah, oh, will I be the clan heir? The blacksmith said, as he gave Nurta a bow. I was wondering when I was going to see you, so what color would it be? Nurta blinked in surprise. Hmm. As a grin then came on his face. Orange, of course. Naruto was surprised and chains shot from the blacksmith arm and wrapped around him quickly. Cram a chakra recoil from the chains. The chain shifted. As Naruto surprised because he were glowing so much chakra he thought it would burn his body. But he did not. As it formed something around his body. As the pieces moved away from him and rested on a large warp bench. Whoa, said Naruto. I got to learn how to do that. It's a bloodline that not many Uzumakis possess. Takashi said. And it's a bloodline your mother possessed. Half the reason she was chosen to be a Jinjulki, like you, said Krama. He long since learned the truth of the night the Kayubi was sealing inside of him, since Krama told him about it. It was a tragic tale, but he was proud of his parents and everything he'd done for him. It made him that much sadder that he had to make such terrible sacrifices in the first place. So, do I have it in her to ask? That is not something I can tell you, said Krama. As his reply was faded, meaning he had enough for the conversation, and he was going to reply again. He spoke near her occasionally, but that didn't mean he was endless grouchy. How would one know if they had this ability in her to ask? Well, let's see, the blacksmith said with a smile. I'm the only one that has a bloodline at the moment, and it's rather tedious doing everything myself. Well then, what do I have to do in her to ask? The blacksmith walked off as he came back with a flat metal. Oh, this. As Nurta lifted up the metal, a silver metal from the blacksmith's hand, not sure what he was supposed to do with it. Flatten your palm, the blacksmith said, as Nurta did as he was told. The metal was warm and gleamed, a blue light when the light caught it. Alright, now chant the chakra over it, not a lot. As Nurta sent as little chakra as he could in his palm. As Nurta maintained the chakra contact while he watched, but nothing happened, as his smile started to fade away. It was supposed to be really rare, and what were the odds of he, the last Uzumaki from his time, supposed to have something like that? I am afraid that you do not possess a bloodline, nurta -kun. I'm sorry, said Takashi. Wait, just for a moment more, said Krama. It's warm, said Naruto, and it's getting warmer. What the hell? As the thing melted in his palm, as the thing then went around his arm, flexible, going straight up to the elbow. Whoa, that's awesome, said Naruto. So, how do I get it off now, he asked. As Takashi and the blacksmith looked at Naruto in surprise. I guess his training should begin immediately, Takashi said, looking a bit stunned. Naruto, you know, that man, the blacksmith. He might just be related to you, through your mother's side, said Grandma. And if that didn't make Naruto more respectful to the man that was now his teacher, what else would? Time skip. So, he possessed the Uzumaki bloodline, Kan he said. I thought the wandering fraction did not possess a bloodline, as those are the rules. Perhaps his mother has the ability, but only as a carrier, said Takashi. They were both watching Naruto, as his first task is was to remove the metal from his hand and return it back to the cylinder form. Not an easy task though, as he didn't know how to use his bloodline. The metal reacted without any conscious to the user's part, so Naruto was going to be there for a while, as it was still flexible and shiny. But to remove it, he had no idea. But to think that he had a bloodline, just like Hoshirama and Madara, but he had no idea how to work. But Krama told him that you have to master his chakra first. By that mean, you'll have to master Krama's chakra as well. 
because her bloodline frequency mix. He could not do that kind of training in the compound. He did not tell anyone about the Kayube. He was sure that they knew something was different about him, and a few even asked about the whisker marks on his face, but he was able to burst it aside. So unless he came up with a solution, it was a bloodline he was going to use. But guys, it'll be instant so right here. If you want the next part of this video to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the bell notification to stay posted. And remember to stay in tune for the rest of the what is coming away over an anime king. And I do hope that you guys enjoy. But I'm off for now. See you guys soon. Peace. I'm out for you guys. Bye guys.